<laughs> Welcome to the channel. I'm Cindy Daycheck with Queen Bee Creations. Um, I'm down on the floor today because we are going to be making a mess. I have, you know what, I've always wanted to try making some concrete planters. And now that it's kind of springtime, it seems like the perfect time to try. And it turned out that my son's cowboy boots had have given it up. Right, so they're all split, and it turns out it would cost more to repair them than they're worth. So he was throwing them out. So you know me, good junk. <laughs> I'm gonna turn them into some planters. And what I intend, okay, so I think I'm armed with everything that I need for this. I have a big bucket, um, and I needed a honking one because he's got honking really huge feet. So I needed something uh, that would hold the foot. I have some dollar store rubber gloves because I want to protect my hands and I envision I'm going to have to be throwing these babies out. I have um, plastic on the floor. This is just a garbage bag to dry. That's my drying rack. And I have Quick Crete, which is just a quick um, cement. And I'm just going to start mixing it. Now, I don't even know how much I need. So I just figured I would need a lot, especially if I did two boots. So I did a lot. I put a lot of water in there. But I have extra water in case it starts drying really fast, or I need more, or I don't know. Something. Yeah, this seems like maybe this is a lot. I never know with these things. Okay. So let me do this. I'm going to take off some of the water. And then that'll be the water that I use. And we'll see how this goes. I mean, this will start to set up and um, start getting thicker anyway. And I'll probably have to dilute it. But I figure if it works, this would be very cool. fun just mixing just mixing it all it's all pretty gloppy there we go whoa yes so I'm just wishing getting out any of the lumps um, so I think that what you want is cement for this, not concrete. Concrete, I think, has the stones in it, and we don't, we don't want that. And this is kind of a smooth consistency, and if my past experience with this is any help, I think it will start to set up, despite being fairly runny. So, the first part is, I just want to start getting the boots coated. So I'm going to, of course I'm inside. All right. And then I'm going to kind of dunk them around and get them totally coated. <laughs> it just comes out the toe. All right, so that's not finished. I'm gonna anticipate having to do that a number of times, but I wanna get the other one done as well. So let's get that one in. Oh, I had the cup in there. That's where it went. Now, as a planter, you could, of course, just use the boot as it is. Add dirt into it, use it as a planter. Um, 
it would be fine. Ultimately, it would start to break down as the moisture kind of caught into there. But I wanted something that was going to maybe last longer than just one season. And this one is already starting to dry. So we're going to start dipping it more. Once I get a couple of coats on, and I think I'll just be using my cup. Oh, these are getting very heavy, very fast. All right, so maybe let me grab a cup and I'll start using that. And I can see the cement in the base is starting to um, thicken up more. So I think that I actually lucked out with the consistency and that I, I want it to be kind of runny and do a bunch of coats. So this is what I'm gonna keep doing. I'm going to, um, as soon as it looks like the sheen leaves it, I'm going, and I'm gonna keep this moving so it doesn't set entirely and keep breaking up the lumps that, that wanna form. I'm gonna keep doing the, the pour and dip thing so that I keep getting a bunch of light coats on it until I really can't do it anymore. Um, and, uh, just keep reinforcing. Before I show you where we're at with the boot, I just want to show you a little bit of what else I did. So I had um, extra cement, as you could imagine. So one of the things that I did was I poured a bunch into this little glass dish that I had just in the shop. And as it was drying, I pushed in some tea lights so that I would have, and here I just want to brush the water flakes away and dump that out. But you know what? I didn't want to, I didn't want to waste any. So now I have a lovely little tea light for the back patio. Okay. The other thing, the other thing I did was I had the water containers off to the side. So, and they're still, they're still, you're a little drier. Let me do that one. There's still water floating on the top of that one. So what I tried doing, stuff to tea light in. So what I did was I took a small plastic cup, filled it with the cement, and then I put it inside the bigger container and you can see it start to loosen. You can see the color change where it started to, to loosen out of there. All right, so again, you can just kind of easily pull this out, but what will happen is I will get the, um, other cup out which will leave a big indent for a candle and then I have the smaller one which also has the small hole in it so I'm going to continue to futz and get that out but the other thing that I just want to show you before we move on to the boot which is the main thing as I've just created a huge mess was I tried taking some of it and putting it into the mold so I just took a little um I just took a little uh, spoon and spooned it in. And I just thought, well, you know what? I don't have a project for it yet, but I will. Oh, look at that. All the details of the mold. So I need to put that somewhere safe. <laughs> cool. So again, there's nothing wrong and my mold is fine. Now, over time, if I was doing tons of these, I don't know if, I think there's lime, is there lime in cement? Whether that would break down the rubber um, if I was doing this constantly, but I'm not doing it constantly. And I deliberately trialed it, I deliberately trialed it on molds that aren't retired yet. Oh, and look, look at that.
appreciate the detail. So I did a couple of doors and the rest of this just crumbles out. So I will take a brush to this and brush out all the rest of the dust. I tried a couple of the little frames. Because I thought those might be cute. So again, um, I'm not mixing up cement just to fill my molds, but because I had the cement, I had a bunch of things just on the side to be able to turn into other elements, so I didn't waste any of the cement. So what I do have is my boot. Now, it's still cold to the touch, which means it's still drying. But what I am finding is that it's pulling the dye from the leather out. So it's not very uniform in color. And I'd like it to be. So what I am going to do, I'm just going to grab a paintbrush. I have some fusion paint here. Um, just from a, a different project that a client wanted me to use some fusion on. So this color just so you know, is soapstone. So it's a nice gray, which kind of fits in. And I just want to paint this out to make this a little bit more uniform in color. Now I do have some pebble and I do have some linen from um, Fusion as well. So we'll see once this is dried whether I decide that I want to just kind of start doing a little bit of blending to make it a little bit more of a modeled finish, which I'm thinking I will, just to make it a little bit more interesting rather than just the gray. But I'm gonna get the gray on, let it start to dry a bit, and then, then we'll come back and see about adding a little bit more detail, a little bit more texture onto onto this. Now that the boot is mostly dry, mostly, I don't want to say it's totally dry because I'm too impatient and I'd be lying. I am going to take, this is linen, and I'm going to kind of dry brush it. So I'm kind of using the same brush and we're just going to kind of dry brush it over the surface to add a little bit of detail. So what I'm doing is I'm going from dark to light. So we're gonna do this in the linen color. And then when that's dry, I will take pebble and do exactly the same thing. Okay, our boot, oh my goodness, this is heavy. This has got um, our dark gray, it's got our lighter taupey color. It's got the three colors. So our two dry brush colors over top. And I gotta tell you, I wasn't liking it before. I really like it a lot now. So there's two other things that I wanna do to it. The first is I'd like to add, I mean, you could stop now, right? And you can see where that dry brushing really brought out some of the rough details of this. Um, looked way better than just the plain gray. What I want to do is I want to add just a little bit of touch of sort of a, of a lichen kind of, you know, it's sort of like this is old, it's worn, it's been sitting out in the backyard and you've got lichen, moss kind of idea growing on it. So I need to have a green. I don't have a green all in one. That's the color that I want. So we're making our own. I've taken um, liquid patina, which is a top coat. You could use the top coat of your choice. You could use big top. I happen to have this sitting on my table because I was decoupaging with it. And I don't need lots. So I have that. And if you're looking at making any of your paint colors into kind of a, a little bit more permanent, Obviously, this going outside, I don't mind if the colors are all going to wear away and, and stuff. It's designed to look aged. But I'd like a little bit more color. So we're going to add a little bit of acrylic paint to this. Now, 
You want to leave this to be at least 80% top coat, so you're not adding lots to it. I have this green color, which, what does it say? Chrome oxide green. I don't know what that means. I'm just going by the look of it. It's a little bit darker than I wanted. I would have loved like a nice olive green. I didn't have that. So we'll just do two little blobs. Nice, nice and precise measurements for you. Two blobs. Um, and I do have this light olive, but it's way lighter than I want. So we're just gonna do one blob. Uh, you know what? It's all good. Okay, and that takes me roughly where I want to go. So that's the color we've got. I'm going to use the same um, beat up paintbrush. I just want to get it so that it doesn't have any of those other colors in it. And I'd like it to be ratty. I'd like it to be kind of feathered out. And what we're looking at doing is taking some of that green. Okay, I can't use the same paintbrush that's lightening my green too much. And now that I'm looking at it, it's lighter than I want. So let's take a tiny little dab of, what are you? Hooker's Green. Okay, we're doing one dab of that. You know what? Just mix the color you got. If you have olive green to start with, you're good to go. And I'm just using um, acrylics here. I could have used some of my DIY paints, but just I find that these are a little more... Um, intense. I'm just looking for the kind of paintbrush that I'd like. There we go. Just a little fan brush would be perfect for this because I'm not adding tons anywhere. And what I'm looking at is especially around the base, just adding touches of the green here and there, kind of just making it look like it's starting to grow up the sides of my boot. So that's what I'm doing now is just adding um, bits of this, right? Of the green in places where I think that the lichen may have, have grown. So, you know, oh, that's so heavy. Even like up the sides here kind of idea. And then we'll come back for the last step and um, Okay, I have to tell you, I really like it with that little touch of the green added in, just here and there, right? It just adds a little more depth. So we're just doing oh, one last thing. <laughs> um, and just, just so that we're clear, I ended up playing with my green until I got one that really is kind of that khaki olive color that I was after. Um, I wasn't happy with the other greens. They were too much, too bright. And before I put my, my elbow in that, let me dry that off. Because <laughs> I just know. I just know I will. All right. So the last thing I have is dark and decrepit. And this is a, again, another liquid patina from DIY, which is dark. Right, so it's kind of in the brown shades. And what I wanna do with this is just follow some of the lines and the crevices and just add a little bit of shading. So I'm just using a small paintbrush for this one. And I'm just kinda adding a little bit of a dark texture wherever it's sort of already kind of indented and dark and just kind of making it look like sort of dirt has settled in or age has settled in over there and just kind of following some of those lines and crevices that are already on there. And it's just gonna add just another element of detail. I mean, you could skip all of this. You could just paint it one solid color if you wanted but you know what it's a fair bit of work <laughs> so I want it to look how I want it to look and I wanted it to look really old and worn 
and um, this is kind of the final step to help it do that. So again, just kind of following those natural crevices and okay, it's kind of heavy, but you can see down that side right in there. Oh my good Lord, he had big feet. All right, if you're doing your child's boots, um, get them when you're, they're younger. <laughs> Although gosh, I think I would have had to have gotten him when he was six. <laughs> he just got big really fast. All right, I'm just gonna finish doing this to both boots and um, then we're done. And uh, I have to say, this turned out way better than it looked like it was going to when I first started. And here's my finished boots. I have to tell you, they turned out way better than I thought they were going to as I was going through this. Um, it seemed like the cement didn't want to stick at first. That was because I only gave them overnight to dry and then I tried moving them. And the, and the cement was still damp and the leather, I'm going the fabric, the leather was still flexible. So definitely give them a couple of days to dry. And then I did coat them again. So I did the whole process twice. Now there was, which one? Here, like some flaked off and I thought, oh, that's gonna look awful. You know what? Once I painted them and started doing some of the aging and the distressing, that become, became my favorite part. Like that started to look really interesting and really cool. So I have to tell you, I love these now. I wasn't loving them to begin with and I didn't love them when I first painted just the gray. It's those other layers, just that dry brushing and the little bit of the olive and that dark and decrepit that really sort of made them. They just look still like they're really old worn boots. And uh, I can't wait until spring hits and I can actually plant something in them. It's still too early here. Um, but I will take some close up pics for you and uh, you can see some of the texture and uh, let me know what you think. I, this was unexpected. This was way better than I thought. Um, certainly along the way, I was a little, <laughs> I was a little, I'm gonna say depressed, disgruntled, unhappy um, at the beginning because I thought there was a lot of muss and a lot of mess. And I was frustrated that it wasn't working how I wanted it to, but it worked out better then it worked out better. And I think sometimes you just have to, you just have to trust the process and go with it. Sometimes what you envision in your head, I think I was looking for them to look perfect. And that's not really the point of this. It, they were never, never gonna look perfect. That wasn't, that wasn't the project. That wasn't the craft. You wanted them to look old and worn. And now that I went and when I let go of my original thought and I just went with what it wanted to do, oh, man, it turned out so much better. And isn't that a good life lesson along the way? Let me know what you think of this one, guys. You know I love to hear from you. Hope to see you on the next one. And until then, take care.